Hi, I am Cash and I am the product manager here at Lexco Microscopes. Today, I am really excited to talk to you about our new SLI6 Pro inverted fluorescent microscope. Today, we will redefine fluorescence imaging. Before we go any further, I have a question. Are you someone who is looking for high quality multi-channel fluorescent images but is still forced to follow the traditional method of taking images in black and white, layering them, and then assigning pseudo color to them in post process, but would like to switch to an easier, less time consuming process, well, you have come to the right place. Before we go any further, let me introduce you to our system, and then we will switch over to our revolutionary new patented software, which allows you to clear your images, remove any crosstalk, and get excellent live color images. Let me quickly flip over to the microscope. Here we have the SLI 6 Pro inverted fluorescent microscope. Uh, it has all the basic functions of an inverted microscope. You have your focus knob situated here. You can turn on and turn off the microscope with the off and on switch located here. It's, this is a trinocular system, so it can also be upgraded to have a uh, high intensity camera, as you see here. Uh, the light source is located up top. This is for your bright field and phase applications. I have the phase and the daylight filters set here. This scope also has a mechanical stage on it. I have attached it for easier sample movement and manipulation. And there is also a dark room, uh, you know, it's a dark room attachment here. It helps you to block out any stray light that might interfere with your fluorescence applications. This system is fully loaded with a multi-channel fluorescence system. Uh, let's quickly look at the front touchpad. Uh, this touchpad allows you to do multi-channel fluorescence imaging at the click of a button. You heard me right, at the click of a button. There are no moving parts, you don't have to move any levers, you don't have to switch between channels using a turret. No, no, no. Gone are those days. You only have to press a single button and then you go into multi-channel. So let's have a closer look at this panel. All your illumination is controlled via this touchpad. Uh, this is your bright field. Uh, we also have a light ring embedded inside the fixed stage. And this is your multi-channel fluorescence button. You also have the freedom to look at independent channels. As you see here, when I click DAPI, the UV LED is fired. Same goes for GFP and RFP. The LEDs get fired. And if you want to switch to multi-channel mode, just click this button and you have the freedom of choosing two or three channels. And you can also combine any channel that you want. Now, Let's look at the secret sauce that's driving this system. Believe it or not, this is the fluorescent module that is driving this system. This is our patent pending fluorescent light cube. Uh, as you can see, the three LEDs are situated on the side and this is driven by one fluorescent cube that is used both for excitation and emission. This instrument is also field upgradable. So if you choose to get fluorescence upgrade later, it can easily slide in to the side. Uh, this side panel just comes off and you just slide it in and your system is ready to go. You have a fully functional multi-channel fluorescent system. Now let me switch over to the camera view so that I can show you some amazing images that this scope is able to produce. But for that, I'll again have to switch over to the camera view. And here we have the kidney's fascinating structural complexity. This is a multi-channel live color image that you're seeing up on your screen. Uh, I didn't have to go through 10 steps to uh, achieve this result and uh, I have this fascinating image. I did not have to take black and white single channel images, superimpose them, add pseudo coloring and then get to this image. No, I just clicked a few buttons and I'm right here. And again, I read this is a live image. The detailing over here is mind-blowing. 
the distal tubules, the proximal tubules, the glomerulus are all clearly visible. Uh, visualizing immunopathology slides of kidney sections is always fun. So currently I have all the three different channels superimposed and uh, the results are just uh, mind-blowing, extreme level of detailing. So let's quickly go through the software functions here. Uh, this is currently under uh, 40x uh, fluoride objective and uh, the crosstalk is completely removed as you can see through our patented Seabullet software. So currently I have all the channels turned on. I have the multi-channel mode button on here. Uh, let's turn on and turn off the channels and see what happens. Uh, the software also gives you the flexibility to control the the microscope through the computer that you have. You can ch turn on, turn off all the channels. I turn off the red here. I am turning off the green channel now and this is just DAPI and see the level of detailing you get. Uh, you can also combine channels like I am combining the green and blue here. Now I turned off DAPI. Uh, I'll turn on red now. Turn off the green and you have only only the red channels. So again, now I'm combining the green and red. So even if when you have two channels combined or three channels put together, everything, the detail is just amazing that you get. Uh, this is a strong suit of the software. I would say the strongest uh, uh, or the highest point of this software. No crosstalk and the level of detailing. Let's look at the other functions. Uh, this is my intensity controller. I can choose to decrease or in increase the intensity of each channel here. Uh, let's turn on only the DAPI. And let's take the intensity up. As you can see, it's optimized for my sample. So if I turn up, turn it up, it starts get bleached. But again, uh, depending on your sample, if the dye absorption is not great, you can always uh, bump up the DAPI uh, signal, and uh, you know you can make that dye bright. I have a snapshot button here. I can click it and take pictures. So I take a snapshot here, and I this is where my gallery is. This is my gallery view and all the images get stored here as you can see I have been taking quite a few images and this image got stored right here so if I double click here I can always uh, get that image back up on the screen so we will cancel out of here uh, this is my video capture button this is useful when it comes uh, for live cell imaging uh, I press it the video starts recording I press it again the video stops recording and uh, this is great for doing time-lapse imaging again it stores itself at the same location I have my settings button here it gives me the flexibility to choose the image uh, format that I need it to uh, I can take high-res images I can take uh, lower res images depending on my application if I need uh, images for publication I would choose TIFF this is my time-lapse imaging box. I can choose to you know, uh, define the time limit, the time-lapse intervals, and the frame rate for all my video recordings, depending on my application and my uh, experiments. This is my flame frame rate, so I can choose to select that. This is my uh, location selector. I can assign, pre-assign the location on my computer where I want to record my data. So here you can ch uh, you know, choose to opt for the location you need your data to be stored out at so once you predefine all your images and videos store there and uh, that's pretty much it that's uh, it's that simple you know as I said it's at the click of a button so I go back to my uh, view now let's look at this button this is the advanced setting button uh, I can choose to manually uh, change this the advanced settings the image settings a little bit uh, I can uh, increase the exposure time, I can do color balance, I can do black and white, I can do gamma radiation, red, yellow, blue, green balance. So again, depending on my sample, I can choose to do so. I have currently optimized it to my sample, but I can choose to change it manually on my sample. I also have three selector buttons here, the three locks. Uh, they basically lock in my settings. So I have currently saved this current setting under one and uh, I can choose to do it under two and three and have three different settings for three different samples and I click on this button and it saves it under that lock. What that does is if I have three different samples or three different users working on three different samples I can have preset uh, settings load up and saved and uh, whenever you turn it on and you go back to your setting it goes back to what's optimized for your sample. So that's also a groovy thing. 
this is my image uh, flipping button I can flip it upside down I can flip it side to side and uh, this is uh, also pretty handy can uh, you know makes it really easy this is my white balance button I can this is an auto button so uh, this allows me to go back to the preset default setting that's set on the software that we have set which is you know mostly useful for most samples and most dyes but again I would say that's for that's a sort of a beginner uh, setting button people who have not worked too much on fluorescence so if you hit that it goes back to the default setting and uh, then you can always change it manually and that's pretty much it that's how basic the system is how easy and user-friendly it is I just turn on my scope and I turn on my LEDs they instantly turned on and I instantly got this image so no warm-up time no mercury vapor lamp LED based system system is uh, you know just super super e user friendly and for a scope of this level the image quality that you get here and that you're seeing right now is just uh, mind-blowing and it's it's you know it's made possible by our patent pending Siba light cube and our patent pending software so for more information don't forget to log on to www.nextcoinc.com or visit our youtube channel for more information thank you